praise his holy name and we can be assured that everything is right he, his name is holy there's, there's no doubt about it holy has nothing to do with this world we, we need to receive that holy has nothing to do with this world holy is otherworldly otherworldly today we're going to read from john chapter 3 a verse and verses that most churchgoers know and most ministers know about but do they know what it means so let's read john chapter 3 verse 14 and as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Our final verse is 17. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And that is the truth. God, he never sent his Son to condemn us. He sent his Son to save us. But how many want to be saved? How many want to walk in the light? Do, we can't be saved unless we come on his terms. God Almighty, Jesus the Christ, is not going to turn everything around for uh, some mother or, or child or, or husband or grandpa or religion or denomination or some guru in India. God's not going to turn it around for anyone. He's not going to change one jot or tittle of this word for anyone. So... We need to get that straight for starters. John 3.16 is a verse that is going to uh, uh, put many in the fires of hell. Not the actual verse itself, but the misunderstanding of John 3.16. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There's only one way we're going to perish in this life and that is if we do not have the truth if we do not have the truth man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God every word of doctrine unless we have the doctrine of Jesus the Christ we're going to perish I'm telling you we, we can have all the money, we can have all the, the so-called friends and superficial friends most of the time, that is. And we can have all uh, of the comforts of home and all of the creature comforts and all the accolades and all the acceptance of men and women. And we can still perish and be perishing. And I know people like that. I know people who are somebodies in the world, but they're perishing. They're perishing, I'm telling you now. They're falling apart. They're troubled and they don't know what their future is. They don't know what's going on. They're looking for a future. They're thinking about my future. I've got to think about my future. Well, the scriptures cancel all that out and that the scriptures say very clearly that uh, we have an eternal future if we follow Jesus, if we believe, if we believe. But what does believe mean? Let me ask you, let me pass a, a, pass a few uh, 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 questions uh, uh, by you today and ask you uh, 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 a few questions. Those listening by the, the internet and those in the immediate presence. Is peddling the word of God believing, selling the word of God when the Bible says clearly it's to be given freely? Is, is, is that believing? I don't believe it is. And most churches today and ministers, they peddle the word. They sell the word of God. They put a price on the word of God. There's a bar code and a price tag on the word, on the DVDs, on the CDs. It's all priced. That's not believing, that's not faith in the Son of Man. What about false teaching? Obviously, that's not believing. False teaching is, there's, there's two types of false teachers. There's two types of false teachers. There's the false teacher who's totally deceived and, and, and just knows no better because they've never really wanted to do Father's will. And then there's the false teacher 
who, who knows the truth, but found that there's more money in lying than there is in the truth. Both are hell-bound, and both have put themselves in hell. God never came to condemn. God Almighty Jesus the Christ came to save on his terms. We condemn ourselves ultimately by rejecting the Christ and his way. What about pretense? Pretense is that believing? That we're pretending that we love Jesus and we actually love our wife more than Jesus. We love our little children more than Jesus. I've got uh, two beautiful children, Brother Shadrach and Sister Hannah, and I love them dearly, but I don't love them more than Jesus. I love my wife dearly too, Sister Jovi. She's a precious young lady. She's a precious wife. I love her dearly, but I don't love her more than Jesus. I love Jesus more. Pretense, is that believing? No, it's not believing. What about being stingy and, and a tightwad? And the Filipinos say a curry put. Uh, being tight with your money, not giving to the work of the Lord and not helping the preacher. Is, is, is that, is that uh, believing? It's not believing. That's not believing. That's worried. That's a worried person, frightened if I give the money, I've got none left. But they don't believe the word. The word says if you give, it'll be given back. Press down, shaking together and overflowing. What about secret agendas? Is that believing? You have a secret agenda? It, it's not really about Jesus. You just want to become famous or you want to become this or be that or whatever. That's not believing. To have any agenda of your own is not believing because we no longer live for ourselves but for him who died for us a cruel death upon the tree can you say amen here today what about compromise is that believing no it's not believing. you don't believe that the compromise will be cast into hell the compromising church the Laodicean church was lukewarm the compromising church we're not in right standing, compromised with all kinds of teachings and doctrines allowed into the church. That's not believing. That one can't be saved. What about partiality? I'll preach this to the congregation, but I won't preach it to my family. That's no better than Eli, who fell off his chair and broke his neck. And the sons ended up being destroyed. Come on. What is believing? Oh, uh, just believe, just believe. Whosoever believes uh, will be saved. Whosoever believes in the only begotten Son will be saved. What does believe mean? What does believe mean? Huh? I tell you what. What about this? I'll read this to you in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Read it with me. Turn, i oh, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither the fornicator, the idolater, the adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, thieves, covetous, drunks, revelers and extortioners, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. Are they believers? Who was Paul talking to? He was talking to believers. He was talking to Christians. He was talking to people who say they believe. But Paul's telling them that kind of people will not be saved. God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe would be saved and have eternal life. Look, if we believe, we're going to do what he says. If we believe. That's what believe means. Do what he says. The first believing that I did was to repent. I believed what the minister said to me. I had to repent. I believed what, what the minister said because what the minister said was what Jesus said. Repent and be forgiven. Oh, hallelujah. And so, today, I'm asking the ministers of the churches worldwide, ask yourself, is that your message? What believe means? Or is it just some headspace? Oh, I just believe. I just believe. Therefore, I won't perish. Look, everyone that has said that to me, I can see before my eyes they're perishing. They've got no joy. They've got no peace. They've got no, 
the blessing of the Holy Ghost in their life. They've got all kinds of agendas. They're compromising. They're stingy. They 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 accept false teaching and even promote and and and, and subscribe to false teaching and false teachers. They're perishing because they don't believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe, only believe, only believe, all things are possible, only believe. Just do what he says. Let me read it to you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would do what he said should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 8 1 says there's no condemnation for them who do what Jesus says. There's no condemnation for them who do what Jesus says. That's my paraphrase given to me by the Holy Ghost. Romans 8 1. There is no con you cannot condemn a man. You can say what you like, you can jump up and down, you can write bad articles, you can do anything, but you can't bring a true man of God into condemnation because he does what Jesus says. He is a believer. He really believes and he doesn't perish. He flourishes. You see the joy in the man. You see the joy in the sister. You see the life in their being. They look younger than ever. And it's 10 years later that you see them and say, Boy, look at you, you look younger than ever. And then they turn around in the honesty of the Christ and the humility of the Christ and the truth of the Christ and say, I give the glory to you. It's only the Holy Ghost in me that keeps me. I'm kept by the power of God through faith in the faith, the doctrine of Jesus. The Christ, hallelujah. You can say amen. Oh my, oh why, but I'm going to say hallelujah.